morning. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Belinda and this is Belinda's Bobbles Christmas in July. Today is day number five, so July 5th, 2024. I am here in hot, sunny Fort Worth, Texas. It's supposed to be in the hundreds again today. While we wait for Hurricane Barrel to come this direction. We should be getting some really good rain, at least this far inland. We should be getting some really good rain from it. Um, unfortunately, it's probably going to do some destruction on its way to us. Ooh. Okay. Sorry, it's our little <clears throat> area on the yarn that I'm concerned about. I need to look at this. Make sure it's not... Don't you hate on chenille when you come to a little spot like this? I'm pulling on it. it. It's tight. It's just on the edge. And it'll end up hiding. See, can't even see it. But I am still working on this baby blanket. I didn't get much... Um, crocheting done yesterday. I was having too much fun with my baking and cooking and everything and visiting and, and for a change I wasn't sitting while talking and crocheting. We were just visiting. Had a great visit um, with my brother Bill and his partner yesterday and we had a really good lunch. And he showed me a couple of things. Sorry. I've got a bite on my face and it is irritating me to no end. But he wasn't, you know, he didn't feel like coming on, on with me. But he did um, show me a couple of things and for me to be able to share with you. Uh, he was at On the Lamb with me a few weeks ago and was talking to someone who was getting ready to do her first time speaking. Now, Bill, he uses steaking in a lot of different places. He calls, you know, some of it unnecessary steaking, but he's he utilizes it, and it doesn't have to be just for color work or just for cardigans, which he uses that also. But he does it in the um, armhole sometimes and in the neckline. And this was one. What he's doing right now is he's recovering a lot of yarns. So he got him a nitty knotty. And he's been so, um, <clears throat> excuse me. My morning voice is not always great. But um, he has been recovering yarns by just pulling out from projects that he's just not wearing anymore and soaking it. And this was one that he had recovered a while, while back, I think. But it's acrylic yarn. And he had steeped acrylic yarn. Now this is this was from a vest or a sweater that he didn't do any special treatment for. He just threw it around, washed it in the washing machine, went into the dryer, so no special treatment. And he wanted to show me what ended up happening with the steaking he had done. He did the crochet reinforcement, and he did two rows because he figured this was slippy um, yarn, so just in case. So he did two rows, which he doesn't do with his woolly wools because, you know, those will grab a hold of each other. And he didn't cut super short but he did cut pretty short and none of them have worked their way through. I see all different options out there as far as some people say you have to sew it. You have to reinforce it with sewing. Some people say this works fine. It seems to work differently for everybody, but 
for him, and he said that he's only going to be doing one row because it does make a bit of a lump here, doing two rows. If you have a tight garment, I would imagine that would show through. But if there's a little bit of ease, it wouldn't. But it could be an irritant to some people. So he's, he said this next time, which is going to be on woolly wool anyways, he's only going to do one row. And he was showing me how he did this. So once I try it, I'll show you too. <laughs> I do want to do some steaking because I want to do a cardigan, but I do not want, I don't mind purling so much, but I am so much slower with purling. And I just want to keep moving. And it be, but he was also showing me how he does his necklines with doing the steaking, casting off a stitch down here and put it, or not casting it off, but putting it on a holder. And I really do like how he's doing this here. We'll look into that a little bit further later on. Okay, so that was item number one that he showed me. I'll have to put a picture up because this is his current project that he is working on. And it's basically another vest like this. And um, the book he uses is one that I haven't started using yet. I need to start using and trying it out. Um, but it's, I'll put the name here. It's too early in the morning. Okay, so name there. <laughs> Picture here. <laughs> Okay, so he's calling this his unnecessary steaking. And what is going on here is necklines for him, instead of um, building it up in the back, which you do with the German short rows, he is casting off early. But then... So that he, this especially, he says, works good whenever you've got yarn that could be pulling. Because, you know, whenever we get up to the top, if we end up um, doing it in pieces, if you're casting off in the back and building up on the sides, you're going to end up with pulling, more than likely. Or the design of the yarn is just going to look totally different. So instead, what he does is he wants to be able to make it to where the, it come, uh, the shoulders come up higher because he has a wider area at the back of the neck. And if he does German short rows, it just crawls up his neck. So he needs it down a little bit lower. So what he has found to do is he does that, this weird looking loop. So at the bottom here, he, he has taken and um, cast off those stitches. And then he cast on about six stitches in the next row. And he continues on with his shoulders. And once he is done with the shoulders, he will end up steaking that little bit at the top there uh, and fold it back and do his little, do um, the crochet method more than likely and just um, fold that little bit back. But it makes it to where if you have a yarn that, he just does it all the time now, but it, um, if, you, if you have a yarn that's going to slightly pull, there's less chance of it doing it that way because you're still going further across and you're going back and forth. You're not just going back and forth on one side. And the top I had on yesterday, the V-neck, it did that. And I use that as a way to show which side is my back because if you looked at uh, the yarn on my back it's got a brown area on one shoulder so I put that in the back so I don't see it <laughs> but it makes so much sense to me I think that may end up being some steaking I try first
maybe even on a v-neck for a sleeve for a sleeveless or for a vest okay we're gonna have to think about this if any of y'all have tried anything like this please let me know i would love to see um have comments down below this is some things for me to explore and hopefully you'll explore or you'll let me know how if it ever worked for you or what your experiences have been with steaking. The only thing I have steaked so far was a sock tube and I turned it into arm warmers because where I was working at that time the air conditioner was really strong in the drive through area of the pharmacy and so I would get cold in the summer. Yeah, cold here in Texas in the summer. <laughs> but most of the time I was too warm, so that way I just had the arm warmers for whenever I needed to throw something on real quick and it didn't mess with my uniform or anything. Okay. Today, as you can see, is a work day for me. It is my last work day before vacation, so vacation starts tomorrow. Just had the last two days off, work today, and then have a whole week off. I'm excited. But plans may change for this coming week, mainly because of Barrel. Hurricane Barrel is coming this direction, it looks like, and we don't know exactly, but it could, it looks like it's going to show up around Wednesday, which is when um, we were going to go to Waco. We have a hotel room in Waco for Wednesday night, and that may change. And the grandkids are coming into town along with our daughter, Shauna, so see what we get up to, but it may be more indoor fun instead of because of how hot it is, because of how wet it is, which will be very different. This is going to be an unusual summer, I think, for us. All right, so I'm going to try to get this finished. Oh, I should show you what, what's going on here. Okay, so I am on the last row. <laughs> I showed this to you on day one. This is the Princess of Diamonds baby blanket. And I really do love how it's turned out. I'm using Premier Parfait Layer. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but I had four of these. I went through one full one, and this is, it's bulky number five, 240 grams. And I've ended up going through a little bit of a second one. So I'm thinking probably about 260, 270 grams for a baby blanket, which is not bad. And it's a good size. But I decided, instead, since this is for a baby boy, instead of having a um, lace edge, I'm just doing, I did a single crochet US terms and I'm doing a half double crochet with the contrasting color. So you got the yellow in there. So that gets all the colors there on the edge. And then I just have to weave in ends. So I am close. I have three sides left to do. So I will get I will get this done today because I need to wash it tomorrow and get up on the line so that I can get it packaged up and take it to the baby shower on Sunday. So plans for tomorrow. Laundry. <laughs> and I don't know what else. You'll just have to come along and see what I get up to tomorrow. Because this vacation is a staycation. 
we need to go somewhere tomorrow, don't we? But it's a Saturday. It's a holiday weekend. It's going to be busy. I'll figure something out. I don't know why, but I'll figure something out. Okay. Well, I have waffled on here for about 15 minutes. I'm going to finish my coffee, finish knitting on this, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Y'all have a great day, and stay warm if it's cold where you are. Stay cool if it's hot where you are. We are definitely having an extreme year. See you soon.